What is supplementation, you ask? What can and can't you supplement on? What do you need to start a supplementation business? All these questions and so much more I'm going to answer for you in today's video. Now today's video is all about supplementation for beginners. If you're looking to get into supplementation, if you're looking to get started, or if you just want some more information and you want to know what can and can't you supplement. I'm going to break down so much in this video. I'm going to show you various examples. This is going to be a jam-packed video, but it's going to be a good one. So stay tuned. Don't forget to like and subscribe. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into supplementation. of supplementation blanks supplementation blanks so before I break down everything that I have on my table if you're just getting started into supplementation if you've never supplemented before let me break it down for you so the process of supplementation is really quite simple you're taking your supplementation ink it's a special ink you're taking the special paper that's coated the supplementation paper you're printing your images onto the paper and then you're going to take that special paper and you're going to press it onto your supplementation blanks or onto your supplementation substrate the ink from the paper releases a gas that transfers and infuses and embeds into the products into the fabric into the substrate so it's releasing gases and it's going into the fabric into the shirt so it's dye sublimation using infusible ink infusing into your fabrics or your substrates and that's how the process of sublimation works real simple real easy so if you've never sublimated before, you're going to need a few things in order to get started. You're going to need sublimation ink, sublimation paper, a designated sublimation printer, or a converted printer, and I'll get to that later. I'll show you the examples that I have. You're going to need a heat press, or you can use a Cricut press, but either way, you're going to need something that goes up to at least 375 degrees Fahrenheit, so that way you can sublimate it. So anything that goes up to at least 400 degrees, you're golden, all right? So I recommend a heat press, but you can also use an easy press as well. Now, some things require a higher temperature up to 400 degrees, but 375 degrees is pretty much the most that you'll need in most sublimation projects, all right? So you're also going to need heat-resistant tape, and you're also going to need butcher paper. You can get this at Amazon. It's linked in my Amazon store. You can also find this in your local craft stores or in places like Sam's Club or Costco's. I've seen a huge roll at Sam's Club, but this is linked in my Amazon store as well. Wherever you get it from, you have to have butcher paper in order to supplement so that way the ink doesn't transfer through. So butcher paper is a must for every sublimation project. And lastly, you're going to need sublimation blanks like you see before me, or you're going to need substrates that are coated and ready for sublimation. So I'm going to break down everything that I have on my counter. I'm going to show you some examples of what you can sublimate on because, guys, the possibilities are endless. You can sublimate all of this and so much more. Then I'm going to show you my printers, and I'm going to tell you exactly where you can find the best blanks. So stay tuned. Let's take a closer look at all of the sublimation blanks that we have. So now everything that I'm going to show you, I do have a video on it because all of these I've sublimated on camera on my channel. Like this nine panel sublimation pillow, it's front and back. I have a full video, full tutorial on this. You can supplement this pillow or things like this because they're 100% polyester. 100% polyester, which most of these items are. Now, if it's not 100% polyester, you need at least, at least 65% polyester. And I'll show you some examples of that as well. So all of these tumblers are sublimation coated. They have that poly coat. I don't know if I'm saying it right. I was about to say polyurethane, but it's not polyurethane, but it's coated ready for sublimation. So all of these I have a tutorial on. You can sublimate tumblers. You can sublimate mugs. You can sublimate sippy cups, Libby cans, coffee cups. Listen, the possibilities are endless with drinkware. And this is just a few of the different sizes and shapes. But again, you can supplement so many different types of mugs and tumblers as long as they're coated. Now, 
Some of the things that you get from Dollar Tree, like this one, well, this is a Dollar Tree mug. You cannot sublimate on this. And I'm pretty sure you're probably wondering what's this image. This is a white toner image with a hard surface paper. So this is not sublimation. You cannot sublimate on dark colors and you cannot sublimate on things that are not poly coated so that way um, the ink will transfer. But this is a white toner image. All of these have a special coating on them for sublimation. So up close, I have some boxers that I sublimated for my son. These are, of course, polyester boxers. You can sublimate things like mouse pad. Now this one was sublimated like two years ago, probably, and the colors are still vibrant. Of course, he uses the mouse pad on it every day and the colors are still vibrant. Sublimation ink is permanent. You can sublimate things like masks. You can sublimate anything that has the poly coating on it, all right? And this is a pillow that I supplemented last year for Christmas. The colors are so vibrant. This is a canvas-like polyester pillowcase. So you can supplement on any materials like this as long as they're light colors as well. You can supplement on socks. These are the Silky Sock brands. They have all different types of socks and sizes. So they come blank like this. And then, of course, you take your image and you can supplement them and you get beautiful custom socks on both sides. So these socks are 100% polyester as well. You can supplement on things like coasters for Christmas as long as it has that poly coating. And as you can see, these are like acrylic. So different types of materials you can supplement on as well. You can supplement on baby bird cloths. You can supplement on um, stove mittens. You can supplement on, of course, aprons. I've done those before. The possibilities are endless, guys. All of these are 100% polyester. I supplemented a nice Barbie bag. I had a reel and I had a video doing that. And this is really nice because even though it has like this effect, it's still polyester. So just go try out any different materials, substrates, as long as it's polyester, you can supplemate on it trying to see if they had a tag let's look I'm going to show you the tag so that way you can see it up close for yourself 100% polyester so even though it has like this nice effect to it when you supplement this side of it you'll get a nice image and you can customize bags like this you can supplement of course luggage tags all types of luggage tags I've done magnets before all of these make great sublimation crafts and gifts and things that you can sell. So now guys, let's get into the shirts. This is a shirt that I sublimated two years ago. Two years ago, and look at those colors. The shirt is worn out, but guess what? Those colors are still going strong. Those colors are still vibrant. It's not faded, it's not scratched, but the shirt is. <laughs> Never mind that. This was another shirt that I did. Um, for when me and my son had went to Disney World and look at the colors really good but guys these are 100% polyester performance shirts these are the gilded ones I'm not exactly sure the model number I can't remember which one but as long as they have 100% polyester you guys are good to supplement on them and now I know some of you are always wondering what other colors can you supplement on here is a light athletic gray shirt that you can sublimate on. This is 100% sublimation, no hack on a light gray shirt. And again, this is 100% polyester, 100% polyester, but it's light gray. So you can sublimate on um, like light pink shirts, yellow shirts, you know, light orange shirts. It depends on the colors that you're using to sublimate as well. But as long as the color is a light shirt, you can sublimate on it. You cannot sublimate white ink, so anything white will not show. So if there's anything white, it won't show. It'll just be blank. So just keep that in mind as well. Now, if you have 65% you can sublimate on it, but the colors won't be as vibrant. So now this is a hack that you can do. Now I did this, I have a full video on it. This was a 65% polyester shirt and 35% cotton. 
Not sure if you'll be able to see it because it's on a dark tag, but it's 65% polyester, 35% cotton, but I bleached the middle area and then I got the area white and then I sublimated on top. So that's another method that you can do if you're sublimating on um, darker color shirts. All right, so this was a method that I had tried out, loved it and worked out. But if you guys wanna use dark shirts, you're gonna have to use a hack. You're gonna have to use a hack. So this was the Sublimation DTF hack. Because it's a dark shirt, you cannot sublimate onto dark shirts. So I have a full video for this one and I'll have it linked down below in the description box. It's sublimation ink with the DTF powder behind it on top of vinyl. So this is one of the sublimation hacks that you can do if you want to sublimate on dark color shirts. Or you can use the Caesar Color Easy DTV. And this is a shirt that I had did with using that material. This is what it looks like, Caesar Color Easy DTV. You can either print directly on it or you can use your sublimation paper and mirror it down and then press it onto the vinyl. So this is a printable vinyl and you can use it when you're sublimating onto dark color shirts. So again, this is not embedded into the fabric. These are, this is into the fabric, it's permanent, it's on the shirt. This is the DTF film, this is the printable vinyl on top of the shirt. And this will allow you to use the sublimation hat directly onto a dark color shirt. So as you can see, the Caesar Color DTV has some stretch to it, but this one does not. This one has no stretch to it because it's the DTF film. But either way, this will allow you to sublimate onto darks. And these two are 100% cotton shirts. 100% cotton shirts. A lot of companies have come out with products to make this whole sublimation so much easier because not everyone can get their hands on polyester shirts. Most people want to sublimate on dark. So you can use these trending sublimation hacks, okay? So HTV Rant has a sublimation HTV for dark fabric, and I have a video on that where you can sublimate using their printable vinyl as well. And as I showed you earlier, Caesar has one. Um, there's so many other companies that have them as well. So all you wanna do is look for something that you can supplement onto and then you can press it onto the shirt. So the Caesar Color Easy DTV, the supplementation for darks. Shimika has one as well, and I'm not sure, but PYD Life might have one as well. But either way, all these products will be linked down below. So now let's go ahead and let's talk about the paper, the ink, and the printers that you'll need for sublimation because you can't sublimate without those products. All right, so I'm over here by my printers and I have um, three sublimation printers, believe it or not. So first off, you're gonna need a designated sublimation printer. You cannot mix inks. You cannot go back and forth from inkjet to sublimation. Once you have a sublimation printer that's for sublimation and sublimation only. So now you have the option of two different types of sublimation printers. You can buy one that's already designated and made for sublimation specifically, like the Sawgrass. This is the SG500. I recommend the SG1000 if you're gonna get a Sawgrass printer. This one is ready for sublimation already. No conversion needed. This one is already ready to go. Comes with some starter ink. All you have to do is you get your sublimation paper and print out. The SG500, I believe you can find a bundle around $600 or so, and especially when they're on sale, there's a lot of bundle deals. So if you wanna go that route, if you have the budget for that, Sawgrass is the number one printer for sublimation. Now, the second biggest printer company might be even bigger than Sawgrass. A lot of people are going with converted printers because sometimes you can find them cheaper, but sometimes they are high as well. Now, another most popular brand of printer are the Epson printers. Now, these printers you can find as little as $200 or less if you find them on sale, like in marketplaces. But guys, when you buy these sublimation printers, you do have to convert them and you do void the warranty. Once you do not use it for its intended use, once you decide not to put the inkjet ink in like this I have all of my inkjet ink that came with my Epson printer once you do not put this ink inside the Epson printer and you decide to convert it and put in sublimation ink you void the warranty that's the risk you take so if you have any problems with the Epson printer once you put in the sublimation ink you cannot go back and call customer service you can't call me a lot of people call me you can't call anyone you're gonna have to fix it yourself you void the factory warranty because you're using it with a different ink 
clean. Now, nine times out of 10, you're not gonna have any problems. I've never had any problems with my Epson printers, so I've never had an issue to call. But if you decided to convert your printers, then just know your warranty is voided. So there's two different types of printers. I started out with the Workforce, the Epson 7710 Workforce. Those type of printers require the syringe this is the supplement i have so much more because i don't use it anymore but you have to actually you have to actually get the cartridges and you have to feed the ink in with the syringes uh it was a whole process i have a full video on that way back when i'll put that down below those printers are hard to find now because they were in such high demand but they're pretty much sold out everywhere you can't even find pretty much a workforce anywhere but this is what mine looks like just in case you haven't seen it, this is my Epson 7710 Workforce. And this one prints up to 11 by 17. Has the bottom tray down here as well as down here. So this one was a really, really big one. That's why I got it. It has the feeder, has the scanner. And the cartridges, the ink cartridges are like in here. I have it on my shelf so I can't lift it up. But that's the Workforce one where you have to use the syringe. This one is the 8550. I converted this one. This one takes six inks. And if you look down over here, this is the ink chamber. Six colors. Now all you have to do for the eco tanks is lift it up. All you have to do is lift it up. Once you get to the ink chamber, see these? Instead of inserting needles, all you do is flip this up and you would put the ink in just like so and it would drain and fall right into the chamber. These take the regular ink bottles. The regular ink bottles, all you have to do is just turn them upside down and place the ink in just like that. So this one is Cosmos ink, or you can buy Hippo ink, or you can buy Printer's Jack. There's a lot of different brands on Amazon, but the Hippo ink I'm gonna use next because it's a little bit cheaper. And these eco tanks are so much better because the ink lasts so much longer. It's no leaks, no spills, all you're doing is putting the ink in just like that. The bottles are ready to go. So that way, all you do is unscrew the top and turn it upside down and put it right in. The other ones, you have to do all of the needles and the syringes. It's a really messy process and it's a hassle. So the eco tanks are much better than the workforces. Now you don't have to get this big one. This is the 8550. It still has six colors, still has six colors. But if you want one that has four colors, you can go with other eco tank models as well. So if you're looking for a more budget friendly and a starter printer, you can use the smaller Epson EcoTank printers. This model is the 2720, but they have a few different models. So all you gotta do is go on the Epson website and it's the same type of system, but this one takes the regular four colors, the cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Same process where you turn the bottles upside down and this is a conversion as well. So I know there's a few different models for the size, but again, this is a much smaller printer, starter printer if you get into sublimation so all you have to do is don't put the inkjet in it some people have messed up you cannot put the inkjet ink that comes with it you have to put sublimation ink once you put inkjet in you have to use it as an inkjet printer all right so once you buy it and unwrap it just put the inkjet aside and then put in your sublimation ink all right so any of these smaller models i believe it prints up to legal size so no large format if you want a larger printer you're going to run up about six seven eight hundred dollars or more depending upon the model that you get so like the epson eco tank 15,000, all of those are the bigger ones if you're looking to print much bigger images this is gonna be your regular letter size and A4 paper size for sublimation and you'll print it out on sublimation paper. Now you might ask, what's my favorite sublimation paper? I'll tell you right now. My number one go-to sublimation paper is of course A sub. You can get this in all various different sizes. You can get it in the Eco A sub. I would say this is the best sublimation because there's a lot of companies out there. Now you got a lot of black owned companies that have sublimation paper, which are great as well. But this is the best budget friendly sublimation paper. I started out with this one and it's just, I just love it. But you have some other options. The Hippo as well, that's, they have great sublimation paper. PYD Life has sublimation paper. But if I'm gonna recommend anyone i'm gonna always recommend asa that's my number one my go-to and then i'll use all the other brands when i run out 
So if I'm going to recommend any sublimation paper, it's going to be ASUB. I love their paper. And then, of course, you have other brands. There's some black-owned brands as well. And I also know Crafting with Cassandra. I believe that's her IG name. She has her own brand of sublimation paper, black-owned. But no matter what brand you're using, you just have to have sublimation paper in order to transfer and press for sublimation. And lastly, you need a heat press. So like I said earlier, you can use a Cricut press, but when it comes to sublimation, I typically use a heat press. So this is my HPN one, 16 by 20. This is my Recoma one, 15 by 15. And this is my Trans Pro Plus. So this is a 16 by 20 as well. These are gonna provide you with that firm, consistent pressure that you're gonna need for sublimation. And they're all gonna heat up to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. So you wanna think about that when you're starting your sublimation business. Business. so you're definitely gonna need a heat press it doesn't have to be an expensive heat press so you can also start off with the HTV Ront that I have that's a 15 by 15 auto press and that's much cheaper one around $200 these are all gonna be over $600 heat presses so consider your budget when you're getting ready to start your sublimation business because it is gonna start to add up you definitely have to have a heat press you have to have a sublimation printer you have to have the ink you have to have the paper you have to have the butcher paper the heat tape sometimes you need gloves if you you're doing mugs and tumblers you're gonna need a sublimation oven or a sublimation mug press so depending upon what you want to press will determine the type of heat press or heating element that you're gonna need for your sublimation business and of course you're gonna to have to have all the sublimation blanks so the price is gonna to start to add up so you have to think about everything as a whole when you're starting your sublimation business speaking of blanks where do you get blanks from Trina so before I end the video I'm gonna tell you where you can find the best blanks from. So if you're looking for places to buy sublimation blanks from, substrates from that you can sublimate on, you might want to already check out where you're shopping like to buy your vinyl and stuff because nine times out of ten they already sell sublimation blanks. Sublimation is a huge business so everyone is getting into it. Everyone is selling all different types of blanks and there's so much more that I didn't even show you guys. So some of the top places that I know of, Heat Transfer Warehouse, Heat Press Nation, Condi, the Stainless Steel Depot for all of the hog tumblers, sublimation tumblers and mugs, they sell those. U.S. Coastal Business Supplies, or I believe it's Coastal Business Supplies, DH Gate, AliExpress, Amazon, of course. And if you're looking for blanks where you can go get your hands on them like right away, fast, same day, go to the store so that way you don't have to order and do or worry about shipping and all that, of course you can go to your local craft stores like Michael's, Hobby Lobby, Target, Walmart, you can go to the Dollar Tree, Five Below, the possibilities are endless. Blanks are everywhere guys, so just always make sure you're checking to make sure they have that poly coating on them or make sure they're 100% polyester or at least 65% polyester so that way you can supplement on it. If you have any further questions, please put them down below. All the links to all the products and everything that I showed you in today's video will be linked down below in the description box. As always, thanks for watching. I hope this video was helpful. Happy supplementation and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.